This week we moved into JavaScript. For many of us, a new language. We've worked on Ruby all the way up until this point. We've worked to see, can we translate the methods that we knew in Ruby to a new language? Or, or, does it, or is it just as if we're learning it from scratch again? Let's have a look. Moving from Ruby now into JavaScript. So this is the work that we've got. What are our aims? Test drive a simple JavaScript program using Node. Explain how asynchronous programming is different from synchronous blocking program and apply a co coherent process to learn a new language. So you can see that it's not a case of learning a new language from scratch. We're trying to be taught how to move the knowledge we already have in coding into a new language. Uh, we were then asked, hey, this is a good idea to keep a, a log sheet of all the things that you see that are different and all the things that are same. And getting good at Googling the things that you're after, things that you've already known how to use. How does that work in this new environment? When we started Ruby, I started to think, well, how, how do I do this thing that I did before? And so I really advise anyone on a course to try and do this. It was recommended, and I think it's definitely a good way to look at this. There were things that came up I'd never seen before. I'm kind of doing this in the reverse fashion that other, other people on the, on, in the cohort might be doing. But in, in Ruby, I was amazed that I could have these chevrons that could just concat things. It was, it was much nicer. I really like these common methods, particularly empty, include. The, strangely, the question mark really finishes the sentence for it and makes it so readable. Asynchronous JavaScript, that was something with callbacks and a little bit more in promises to come. That was something that is new. It is, it's a great feature of JavaScript, but equally is something that is quite tricky uh, for us beginners. Uh, but we're getting there um, and we'll look forward to having more of that next week. Running through JavaScript, running files, variables, visibility. You can see all of these seem to be very, very similar to what you would imagine you'd see in uh, Ruby, but we're obviously trying to translate, see how are they, how do they work differently in JavaScript? You can see here now little exercises and challenges for us uh, of example solutions, just so we can get used to the different syntax really and, and any idiosyncrasies that are different. For me personally, uh, classes was an area that I, I wanted to go back over and reinforce. Going through Ruby, that was an object-oriented programming language. Um, having done quite a lot of JavaScript in the past, it was something to get my head around to think that uh, I couldn't just have a, a mild knowledge of this. I needed to go in and really uh, get to grips with it. So it, it's actually strangely by learning Ruby, giving me more confidence in now working with classes in JavaScript where previously, you could quite often work through functional programming and not really have to deal too much with that kind of uh, object orientated world. And then this is where it starts to get more interesting. We start to look at the, the more deeper, larger problems uh, using JavaScript, as you can see here in, in real applications. I've really found working through this that it's been good for me. I was fairly confident working with JavaScript before the course, before the makers course, but I'd never really got to grips with testing in the right way. It was easy enough for me to download the Jest package. I'd seen it doing a little bit with React before and simply having, you know, expect this to be that. But what I've learned doing this course is kept coming back more and more is to, to work through test driven developments. And now I feel more confident rather than having console log everywhere. So with the testing that's now been instilled into us from our Ruby work, uh, although we're using a new framework rather than our spec, we're using Jest. For me, there's so much similarity um, they're all using a sort of, or you could argue, behavior-driven development, the, the kind of given when then setup, that it's really changed the way that now I'm approaching my JavaScript programs. Now I feel much more confident as you move on to problems further down the, the program you're making, realizing something's not working anymore because you actually broke something from further back. Because you've got this documentation I can refer back to, because we've been shown how to unit test rather than it falling into integration, it's, it's really made that much a much uh, more enriched process for me. Let's show you some of the things we were working on in phase two. We've got shopping basket, a thermostat, GitHub client. We found this one quite tricky, but um, we got there in the end. We're working with an API here as well, but let's have a look at the shopping basket. First of all, I guess I should show you the uh, package JSON file. So this might be new to you if you're just been working and if you're maybe in the cohort behind and you're working through gem files in Ruby, this is something you would run if you literally run npm init and then why just to make life quicker for you, the why does this, uh, it will set up one of these package JSON files for you. 
Now, what this does is a way to for all of the devs in the team that you're working with, or just yourself on your own project, as I've got here, to kind of have like all your dependencies, all these external packages that you use, be kept here. Now, those when we install them will go into this node modules package, which if you're if you're new to this as well, get ignore. Definitely worthwhile getting that in the node modules. Okay, uh, but going back going back to this now, we can see there's that package JSON again. So you can see I've got Jest installed in this particular one. So this helps me run my tests, uh, as I said, which was a, a better experience for me than I'd had previously using um, just console logs everywhere. Uh, now, what I've done specifically is run a little script called test. So now if I, I'm in here, well, in fact, I need to get into the right directory first. So into the shopping basket, there we go. So now if I run npm test, there we go. So it runs through and shows that all my tests are passing. So if I now, let's actually have a look at what some of those are. Let's clear that up. Um, so we had candy and let's bring out candy test. Oh, should have done that double click. And let's just see how these things link up. So here we go. So first of all, I've, I've pulled in the, by requiring here, this, this package now in the test driven development method of producing this, this I did not produce to start with. Okay, what we did first of all is create the test. So we describe a candy class and we, I've got here it uh, get name returns the the name. Okay, so what I've actually got here is I should have put in um, also returns the price. So I did two tests here in fact, I've just not labeled it as such. So I created a new candy object uh, Mars uh, for four ninety nine seems quite expensive, but there we go. Um, and so we said that when we run this through, we're expecting when we run that command on that on that instance, it should be we would expect it to be the name as Mars and the price to be four ninety nine. Okay, so let's let's just for the sake of it push that out and again run npm test. And here we go. So we've got an error. So we can see it says candy is not defined. Well, I took away what candy was. So let's pull that back in. A module exports there. And now this time we can see everything should work. I, well, let's on purpose. Let's get rid of price. Run that again. You can see now it, it points out for you where your error is coming from. So now I can simply put this back. And off we go. So everything's everything's working well again. Okay, so it's quite a nice way of being able to work forward. So I built this from the candy element, which then falls part of a shopping basket. So let's remember to double click this time. So you can see I've got far more tests in this setup. Um, so without going and showing you the shopping basket now, you can see how that you can set up your mentality of how you're going to work through things, and and then actually play those out. Now, what I like about this is also JavaScript. I've personally found it a lot easier for doing uh, mocking of things because you just use the language you already know. So we've got here an object that says, rather than having that as the actual object, then we need to rely on, we need to rely on the candy class. We're able to just insert this object that says, right, here's a function called get name. So when Mars double comes and it gets asked for the get name part, it's going to return Mars. What we've achieved there is made sure that we've got no dependencies on something else. So it's a, a true unit test now. And I can feel confident if something goes wrong with the shopping basket, there's potential that I've incorrectly written my test, but I know that I don't need to go back a stage further and start moving uh, stuff in the candy class around. So that's just something that we've been working on this week. So each week we get asked, can you try and build something over the weekend based on the learning that you've had now? More often than not, that kind of comes from a completely greenfield place. So you really have to put together quite a lot of knowledge to build up how you'll make, you'll make these things. So this week we had the bowling challenge. So, so it's not a bowling game, but rather a bowling scorecard. So let's take a look at what I've done with my weekend challenge, the bowling one here. So let's take a look at the package JSON first of all. Uh, let's give ourselves a bit more room. So there's a lot more been going on here. We can see with the tests in my scripts here, I've still got Jest, but what I've also included now is uh, a watch file. So now as I 
have this going, it will run. And anytime I save one of the test files, if I just control less in there, then it will run it. Uh, and also there's a coverage. Okay, so you can see how far my tests have gone. So I've got a frame, a game, and a user interface file. Currently, the user interface file I've been messing around with a little bit. Let's just show you what I've got going on here. I've found a setup. Let's see what it's called here, prompt. So now that will actually push out this information to the console so we can try and work with the user. Uh, but I need to make sure I can walk before I can run. So let's take a look. Rather than showing you what I've actually coded, let's take a look at the testing setup for that. Let's take, like, like we had candy and we had shopping basket. I've got frame. So I said to myself, can I get return the value of the first roll? Can I get a total for those? Strikes, spares, and you see that I've done several setups so that I can try and make it a more thorough test. In fact, let's run that NPM test. And it will say currently past all of those. Those are the ones that I've set up. Obviously, I'm showing you this at the point where I felt confident that I'd completed the section. We can see that I'm happy with those. Let's move into the game. But what's different this time is now because we need to keep this as a unit test, you'll see that I've managed to mock my frame input. So normally with this, you would have game add a frame and you would import a frame instance. That's what's actually happening in this file. But we want to make sure that this this game test that I'm working on is not working on anything else other than the game file. I've got an object here. So when you do add frame, add frame goes and has a look and says, oh, OK, get total. And what have we got there in this object? So that's a function that returns five. Now, by doing so, we've removed all the functionality. I can now tell this program that I want it to when it sees get total to return five. And so I know that my test is not going to be affected by anything else. And even then using, you can see an example of a JavaScript loop there so that I managed to, to show a game that had uh, the total of zero 10 times. So this, this is a, a much more effective way I find of, of testing. And it was something that I didn't have previously before I was on the Maker's course learning how to incorporate TDD. Hopefully that's useful to you, to those people that are looking to come onto the course and Equally for those people that are maybe working through the pre-course or maybe in the first four weeks and you're wondering what's upcoming, will I be ready, what, will, what, what's happening. You can see that the work you're doing now, while this is new, okay, you're, the knowledge that you're building now, you're already going to have a good insight. All the testing work that you're doing, you're just pushing it into a new language. All of the, the functions and the methods same again you're you're you've already got the working knowledge there you're just trying to learn how to speak a new language with that okay but it's a language that you already speak a very very similar one so it's i think it's i think it's going to be good for those of you on this next week we're going to go into even more javascript uh start looking more with apis i believe and with fetch and promises and and the asynchronous a a, 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 I can't say that, asynchronous nature of, of JavaScript and how, how we can make that work.